My name is Anna Gren and I am uh, working currently at the World Bank uh, in Washington DC with a climate change group as a senior climate uh, change specialist. Uh, I am seconded by SIDA, so the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, uh, on this position for um, uh, it's the short term, um, as, well, not short term, but three years. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I joined the bank a year ago. Okay. Yeah. And I've been part of the global advisory panel since the beginning of the program. So of the rich of program. The rich program right? Yes. So I studied initially uh, economics in uh, for my undergraduate studies uh, in the U.S. Uh, and I specialize in urban and development economics. And then I worked for an investment bank in San Francisco. So I studied in, in the state. And then I, I was very young. <laughs> and I very quickly knew that I wanted to continue to study. So I uh, had a scholarship and I did a master's in um, urban planning at the University of Pennsylvania. And did a lot of work on, well, a lot of my studies were on um, real estate finance as well. So it was, urban uh, planning and then combine with some real estate finance at the Wharton School, which is the business school. And okay. after my master's, I got a job working with uh, uh, a real estate investment trust, okay. working on uh, real estate development deals. But I was always in very inclined to working with developing countries, uh, coming from Ecuador originally. Okay. So I'm Ecuadorian um, by birth, uh, um, I'm Swedish also by I like to say by marriage, but I'm, I'm mainly Swedish because I've lived in Sweden most of my adult life. Uh, so I worked with um, with that, but I I really um, was inclined to work in more development or with developing countries. Or oh, it's a long story, but I I, I worked with um, uh, after a while I worked with Ernst and Young Consulting in, in Chile. Yes, doing a lot of the. Uh, real estate finance deals but mainly also looking at infrastructure deals um, so we were doing um, work in Colombia with a transport urban network and we were working a little bit in Argentina Brazil, and Chile uh, and then uh, then my life changed I got married to a Swedish man <laughs> and moved to Sweden and then I um, started my PhD on infrastructure uh, at the Royal Institute of Technology and they are very much focused on on uh, development work and so my research was in South Africa and looking at uh, low-income housing and infrastructure and aspects of, uh, of public services so mainly yeah all aspects related to of course environment but mainly water services access to water services and hygiene in low-income low-income well, homes and low-income areas um, but and that, that my, my PhD research was financed um, by um, uh, by the Swedish government, so by SIDA and also by the Nordic Africa Institute, and uh, yeah, so and that was amazing because that's exactly what I wanted to work on. I mean, those yes. were the issues that I was really um, burning for, and and, uh, and after my PhD, I had a second child, so I knew that I we wanted to stay in Sweden, and uh, and and that was a, it's a, a personal reflection, I think, career-wise, as a mother and. Uh, and a PhD student and you know an early I mean I had worked for many years but then coming from academia and you know the the, the system in Sweden is built that where women and men have access to paternity and maternal leave for 18 months yes. and it was such an, an incredible system for me because I had studied in the US and worked in Latin America and worked in the US and to be a mother and have maternity leave for 18 months with pay with a paid salary it was unheard of and yeah. I remember like speaking to my PhD supervisor and telling him that I was expecting my second child and being really nervous that I wanted to I, I was gonna just work through my you know through my, my right. maternity and he said no 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 that's not for you it's for your child so use that time for your child and, and, and then you, you'll come back to work when you're ready and that was so amazing because it really gave me that that um, flexibility to come back to work and to come back with so much energy as well. Yes. Uh, and so anyhow, um, 
I, uh, I started to work at CEDA and I worked uh, with programs in uh, Bolivia yes. uh, and, cent and Central America. So I've been with CEDA almost 17 years and and that time I, my, my career took me to work in Palestine. So I worked as Consul for Development Cooperation in Jerusalem and um, heading all the infrastructure programs within, uh, within the Swedish cooperation to, to the West Bank and Gaza and there I worked very closely with the World Bank also on, uh, on wastewater treatment plans, um, very close with UNICEF and some of the programs um, and I've worked in different countries throughout Africa and, um, and also in Asia with regional programs on environment and climate and also with, um, yeah, with the water sector and from 2014 to 2018 I became CEDA's uh, lead uh, policy specialist on water um, on water sanitation. So basically, it's it's a big title because you're doing everything <laughs> related to the water sector. Um, but it was an amazing experience because I worked with so many different colleagues with backgrounds within either WASH or within engineering, water resources, transboundary water, and also at the policy level. I think that's probably when you and I met. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, yeah, so okay. that has been fantastic. And now I'm at the World Bank. Okay, for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> You know, courage is something that I keep reminding myself even at this stage, you know, when people ask me to, to speak either on, on high-level panels, for example, I still get nervous and I feel like, you know, why, 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 why should I say yes? And not necessarily from the point of view of being nervous, but mainly that, you know, what, what is it that I want to say? What is it that I want to communicate? So have that courage to really analyze that you do have so much value so much to do and it is harder for women it's mm -hmm. harder to sort of you know get yourself into some of these really fantastic possibilities but I think when you have that passion to, to make a change you know just really get that courage to, to go forward and do it uh, so and, and and keep learning you know just I think that um, I, I don't know, I mean, I'm much older than, older than you, but in women in my generation, sometimes when I speak to colleagues, uh, um, sometimes I already hear people saying like, oh, you know, when I retire, and I feel like, no, no, we have to continue going. I mean, life is so different today, so just continue learning and learning. There's so much happening, and I see that through my kids now as well, that technology has changed so much, and there's so much more, but there's so much more to do, so that's an area that I think it's... It's quite encouraging also to, for many women. We have a lot to do and a lot of space to do it, but it's harder, so courage. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah.